Hey guys, the next stop in my action figure review is the DC Collectibles Red Hood and the Outlaws Red Hood action figure. The long-awaited Jason Todd Red Hood action figure. It's finally here, and it may not be exactly what we were hoping for, or waiting for, <clears throat> but um, it's... It's pretty darn good, and it's certainly better than the DC sub Grant Morrison style Red Hood that we received last year. So, before I get into the figure, I will just do one last look at this package. As we've seen a couple times, if you watch my previous reviews, the Red Hood and the Outlaws look at the top, in the back, in the center, and at the bottom we have New 52 Red Hood action figure. On this side here, we have the shot of the figure, and it's sculpted by Steve Kewis. Not sure if I'm saying that right, um, but I tried. The top, we have a shot of the face, and it says, Superhero turned renegade, Jason Todd stands ready for action as a member of the Outlaws with this striking action figure based on the designs from his action-packed monthly comic book, Red Hood and the Outlaws. And you see Arsenal, Starfire, Starfire and Red Hood as well. That he got some cool uh, silhouetted artwork. My box is a little dented in the corner here, but luckily the figure is in great shape. So let's take a look. How did he turn out? Right off the bat, I'm just going to say that... He looks really good. It captures his appearance in Red Hood and the Outlaws very well. And, you know, I'm, I'm happy to have him, but I still wish that Mattel um, would have given us an Under the Red Hood style, or, you know, even New 52 style, Jason Todd Red Hood. Um, figure on the DC, on the Mr. Terrific body that so many customizers have done since. Um, you know, just a slight tiny tangent here. It would have been cool to see that as the final um, Four Horsemen sculpted style figure. Um, not instead of Unle Doomsday Unleashed, but maybe in addition to, or, you know, to really close it out because. That would have been one that I think that's probably the most asked for figure by fans of DC UC figures. Anyway, off that tangent, because we're on to DC collectibles here, the ones who actually delivered. Let's take a look at the accessories. Um, those being his guns. So he's holding them. And I will take them out. He's got two trigger fingers. They're bendy, so you can kind of curl them into a fist if you don't want him holding the guns. Um, they're just, you know, plastic, molded. Kind of thin, painted silver, painted black on the handles. I don't know what kind of gun they are, I'm sorry, I'm not a gun person, I don't know anything about them. But, they fit nicely in his hands, he's got two of them, better than not having accessories, and then he also has holsters for them on his thighs. They have these little straps and everything that don't actually snap, but, you know, whatever, I guess it's the thought that counts. And they fit nicely in there, very easily. See, now that I'm looking at it, the straps look kind of goofy because they don't like to sit down. I feel like maybe um, some hot water uh, and then just holding them flat like this might help them to curve a little better against the actual uh, against the holster, but that's no biggie. Now, those are his only real accessories. Now, additionally, he has these blades on his arms. Let's talk about these. They are something else, huh? <laughs> I I have to say that I do not remember seeing these in the comic at all. I had to Google image or I Google image searched Red Hood and the Outlaws to see if this was actually something that happened because I did read um, quite a few of those comics. I'm not caught up, but I read a lot of the early half of the series. Um, up until some point after Death of the Family, so, uh, I, but I don't remember seeing these blades, so I Google ser image searched um, uh, Red Hood and the Outlaws, 
and I looked at all the images and I saw maybe two total for like pages worth that had these blades. So I'm, I'm, I find it interesting that they chose to include them to begin with. Um, you know, I, I mean, I guess it's kind of like they want to give us more for our money, really. It's kind of like, a, here you go, we wanted to, to give you more detail for your money, but they're not removable. They, they don't come off of this, this gauntlet. Like, well, whose idea was that? I mean, I don't, you know, I, 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 when I think of, you know, Red Hood, I don't think of these giant blades coming off of his arms. So it's, I, I really don't want them. <laughs> and um, I did see already one review of this. Um, it was Farrow Black who reviewed this and cut them off because they're just so bad. And, I, and I, we were talking about it in our Rogue Show chat, and Rob also said he wants to cut them off because they're just so, like, showed up once or twice in the comics. They don't really earn, you know, or they didn't really earn their spot on this figure permanently, you know, if they come removable, cool, fine, more display options, but man, I think I'm gonna take these off, because I just don't find them to be comic accurate for the regular appearance of this character. Um, I'm thinking that just boiling water on the gauntlets, and then an X-Acto knife will be enough to cut them off pretty cleanly. Uh, I mean, maybe sand the gauntlets after the fact, but that's really kind of... Probably not, though, because I don't, I don't want to have to repaint them. But yeah, probably just exacto knife. If I do that, I'll, I mean, I'll maybe do a little update just to show what he looks like after. But, uh, yeah, those have got to go. So let's just look at the overall sculpt now. I'm sorry I've spent all this time just on little details, but let's take a look at the face sculpt. A big, um, kind of discussion between fans of Red Hood is his new 52 helmet style, which for the most part typically does look like this. This is a really good sculpt of what his helmet looks like in the new 52 usually. Now, some artists choose to take liberties and, and some make it look a little bit more like the original style of the hood, Red Hood, um, some whatever. I think it's an interesting look. Uh, I never really got why he's called Red Hood and wears a red helmet. So it kind of, to me, this new style looks more like a hood because he has the lips and the nose is really defined and the eyes are really defined. But at the same time, I kind of really hate the lips. <laughs> I think they look a little goofy. It looks like he's it's just a red man with a red head and white eyes. Like, he looks like a red Martian um, instead of wearing a helmet. But then you get to see the panel lines, and you see, okay, all right, this is a helmet. He's got, you know, lines on it. Um, but really, in what world is... Where do you find such a tight-fitting helmet, is my question. Um, but anyway, that's just some, you know, a matter of opinion, what style you like. Whether you like it or not, this is typically his look in the New 52, as I said. And they did a really, really nice job sculpting it, so kudos to the sculptor, Steve. Uh, very nice job. The rest of the figure. The chest looks really good, the armor looks really good. Um, the pat symbol, oh shoot. Oh great, nice job, Olivia. <laughs> well, as I was going to say, the bat symbol isn't uh, continued past the jacket, but that's because the jacket is glued onto his chest that I just ripped off. That's my fault. Not DC Collectibles for once. I will probably glue it back down, but it really actually... I might... I probably won't actually now that I look at it, because it does go, just go flat. You don't really... you can't really tell. But yeah, the bat symbol is not continued underneath the jacket because they glue it down. So you're not meant to take it off or move it, even though it is a pliable rubber. That's a little bit disappointing to me. Another note is I'm not a big fan of when they sculpt jackets to be windblown like this. The DCUC Superboy is the same way, and I always really kind of didn't like it as much as just a kind of normal looking jacket like the DCUC Mr. Terrific. Just, you know, because I mean, if, you pose, if you're posing him in a more static way, why would his jacket be blowing in the wind? Or if you're, you know, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know, I'm being picky. I know I'm being really picky, but let me just, you know, I'm, I'm sorry, if you're annoyed at how picky I'm being, let me just say I really do like this figure. I'm not trying to be like a hater. Um, 
as stupid as that sounds. But anyway, um, so anyway, his armor looks really good. I'm sorry if I'm like rambling. Anyway, anyway, there's some that on that, but whatever. Uh, armor looks really good. The jacket, even though I'm not partial to the sculpt of open jackets, it does look really good for what it is. Color looks good. All it's, it looks very accurate to his new 52 costume, uh, costume, uh, uniform design. <laughs> Pardon me. Uh, you can see even they did they even sculpted details up in the back here. Even though you know the jacket kind of does cover it, and, and look at that. I mean, like, why would you sculpt it so windblown in the back? Very weird. And he's got straps going to the uh, holsters, belt, belt buckle, and just to show you the gloves here. Uh, while without the blades, well, not without the blades, but what you know, aside from the blades, this is what they look like. He's got really cool gloves. It's kind of like a shiny, not shiny, but like almost like a glittery black. I guess a metallic black, if that's possible. And uh, the blades are silver, obviously, and they all move. And they, uh, some of them move are tighter than others. Some of them are very loose when they move. But for the most part, you can kind of get them to stay where you want. And the bottom is pretty normal. It's just you know dark gray pants, nicely sculpted. Uh, baggy looking pants, though they he has very skinny legs. I mean, if these are baggy, his legs have to be very skinny underneath because they're very thin. And then he's got sort of boot shoe things at the bottom. He's got a little strap over the top, toe, like steel toes or something. And uh, yeah, overall looks really good. So I know I was nitpicky. And there's things that I don't like and things that I wish they changed, but overall he does look really good and really accurate to the new 52 source material. So I'm going to go through the articulation now. His head will go up a little bit, down very, very little, side to side, and tilts very well. So if you want him to look up, he'll actually look better up into the side. This actually reminds me of that um, a piece of artwork that's very popular that has the, the Bat Boys... Um, all kind of looking to the side. That's side note. Anyway, the arms now, the arms are really kind of puzzling me. They are very stiff, for one. They don't have a lot of motion, too, and they seem like twisted and crooked. I don't know. So they go about the, only like that far up, because I guess because of the shoulders and the sculpting of the jacket barely go up. They will go all the way around, so you can kind of work with it, and like I had in the beginning, you can see the clear plastic shoulder joint. No bicep swivel, but you have a swivel in the elbow, I think. Yeah, you have a swivel in the elbow, uh, which just seems to be frozen on one side. Yeah, that's frozen. But then you have a, a an elbow hinge, the gauntlets swivel, the blades obviously move, and then the wrist also swivels. But it's again one of those kind of bouncy ones that's like, turn it and it just turns back again. I'm not sure what is going on with those. But again, be careful, they do break. Um, now, just like Arsenal, no ab crunch, no waist twist. I have no idea why they're doing this. I really, you know, it, it, it almost doesn't bother me as much on Red Hood as it did on Arsenal, simply because he doesn't need, he's not, you know, quite maybe quite as dynamic as an archer where he needs to bend and twist and stuff to get into a good pose. But really, a waist twist. I mean, I like to be able to turn anyone just a little bit. It just, it just gives them that much more of a dynamic pose. But whatever. Uh, the legs will go forward that much. They'll go back a little bit. And they do go out to the sides. Um, yeah, pretty much as far as Arsenal's did. And again, these um, are soft rubber, so they will bend. And again, clear plastic joints on the inside. He's got single jointed knees. No boot swivel or anything, because it is all sculpted together here. But he does have a hinged foot. So, yeah. That is about that. 
uh, you know, I mean, it's really, it's nice to see this guy finally come to life in a figure that's mass-produced, that's done by one of the two, you know, companies holding the DC, you know, property, the DC toy license, whatever you want to call it. <clears throat> Um, it might not be the exact design that we wanted. I think a lot of people would have preferred to see the under the red hood style as opposed to the new 52 style. Um, I mean, I was fine with either one. I think a lot of people are going to be chopping these blades off or complaining about them if they don't. And, you know, uh, I'm sure there are plenty of like ACBAers who waited just as long as the rest of us for a red hood figure and are going to be disappointed to find out that they can't really pose him the way that they may have hoped. But overall he is really really well sculpted. He looks so so much like the source material and you know he's he's got accessories. He he can you know he looks good. I mean what are you gonna do? I'm happy to have all three of these figures and let me let me just pull them in for a little group shot here. Without, hopefully without knocking anything over. Um, I'm gonna be dis yeah, I'm gonna be displaying these three together for sure. I know some people are gonna wanna put um, Arsenal with Green Arrow and maybe Starfire with the Teen Titans, I don't know. But I'm gonna be displaying these three together because they I mean they are set. <laughs> they look really good together. They maybe stand. Maybe stand. Come on, Starfire. You can do it. She's leaning on her hair. I'm just gonna lean her. Nope. She's not even gonna do that. <laughs> um, what was I saying? Yes, I'm gonna display them together because they are set. They are all the new 52 versions of them in which they appear together, so, I, I'm gonna have to leave her like that, anyway, they do look really good together, um, I'm happy to have all three of them, and I definitely recommend picking them up, if you're a fan of the Red Hood and the Outlaw series, pick up all three, if you're a fan of Red Hood, just get him, if you're a fan of one or two, just get, whoever you feel like getting, get them, recommend them a lot, and, uh, you know, maybe check out your local comic shop to see if they sell them as a set, I, had pre-ordered these from my shop, Amok Time. They have a website as well, amoktime.com, where I got all three of them, I want to say for 50 bucks, which is a good discount as opposed to buying each one separately. Because that's like, that's like what, 15 bucks? 15, 30? No, it's like, it's like maybe 18 bucks a figure instead of 22, 20, 22. So, or 17 bucks, I don't know. Just guessing off the top of my head. So, Yes. Recommend all three of them. Happy to have them. And I think they were, for what they are, I think they were very well done. Um, I think Arsenal was my favorite of the bunch, followed by Red Hood and then Starfire, mostly because she just doesn't want to stand for me. <laughs> but yeah, so I'm sorry this one was a little more of a lengthy review, guys, but uh, you could stop watching by now if you got what you wanted out of the review. <laughs> so. Thank you if you did stick around this long. I'm happy to be able to get these reviews up and uh, hope you guys are picking these figures up and enjoying them as much as I am. And I'll be back with more reviews soon. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye. Red Hood and the Outlaws. And you see Arsenal, Starfire, Starfire and Red Hood as well. Now he got some cool uh, silhouetted artwork. My box is a little dented in the corner here, but luckily the figure is in great shape. So let's take a look. How did he turn out? Right off the bat, I'm just gonna say that he looks really good. It captures his appearance in Red Hood and the Outlaws very well. And, you know, I'm, I'm happy to have him but I still wish that Mattel um, would have given us an Under the Red Hood style, or, you know, even New Hippie 2 style, Jason Todd Red Hood um, figure on the DC, on the Mr. Terrific body, 
that so many customizers have done since. Um, you know, just a slight tiny tangent here. It would have been cool to see that as the final um, Four Horsemen sculpted style figure. Um, not instead of Unle Doomsday Unleashed, but maybe in addition to, or, you know, to really close it out, because that would have been these blades on his arms. Let's talk about these. They are something else, huh? <laughs> I, I have to say that I do not remember seeing these in the comic at all. I had to Google image search, I Google image searched Red Hood and the Outlaws to see if this was actually something that happened, because I did read um, quite a few of those comics. I'm not caught up, but I read a lot of the early half of the series, um, up until some point after Death of the Family, so, uh, I, but I don't remember seeing these blades, so I Google search, image searched um, uh, Red Hood and the Outlaws, and I looked at all the images, and I saw maybe two total for like pages worth that had these blades. So I'm, I'm, I find it interesting that they chose to include them to begin with. Um, you know, I, I mean, I guess it's kind of like they want to give us more for our money, really. It's kind of like, here you go, we wanted to, to give you more detail for your money, but they're not removable. They, they don't come off of this, this gauntlet, like... Hey guys, and next up in my action figure review is the DC Collectibles Red Hood and the Outlaws Red Hood action figure. The long-awaited Jason Todd Red Hood action figure. It's finally here, and it may not be exactly what we were hoping for, or waiting for, <clears throat> Mattel. But, um, it's, it's pretty darn good, and it's certainly better than the DC sub Grant Morrison style Red Hood that we received last year. So, before I get into the figure, I will just do one last look at this package. As we've seen a couple times, if you watch my previous reviews, the Red Hood and the Outlaws look at the top, in the back and the center, and at the bottom we have New 52 Red Hood action figure. On this side here we have the shot of the figure, and it's sculpted by Steve Kewis. Not sure if I'm saying that right, uh, but I tried. the top we have a shot of the face, and it says, Superhero turned renegade, Jason Todd stands ready for action as a member of the Outlaws with this striking action figure based on the designs from his action-packed monthly comic book Red well, whose idea was that? I mean, I don't, you know, I, 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 when I think of, you know, Red Hood, I don't think of these giant blades coming off of his arms. So it's, I, I really don't want them. <laughs> and um, I did see already one review of this. Um, it was Farrow Black who reviewed this and cut them off because they're just so bad. And I, and I, we were talking about it in our Rogue Show chat, and Rob also said he wants to cut them off because they're just so like, showed up once or twice in the comics. They don't really earn, you know, or they didn't really earn their spot on this figure permanently. You know, if they come removable, cool, fine, more display options, but man, I think I'm gonna take these off, because I just don't find them to be comic accurate for the regular appearance of this character. Um, I'm thinking that just boiling water on the gauntlets and then an X-Acto knife will be enough to cut them off pretty cleanly. Uh, I mean, maybe sand the gauntlets after the fact, but that's really kind of... Probably not, though, because I, I don't want to have to repaint them. But yeah, probably just exact when I... Shoo. If I do that, I'll, I mean, I'll maybe do a little update just to show what he looks like after. But, uh, yeah, those have got to go. So let's just look at the overall sculpt now. I'm sorry I've spent all this time just on little details, but I've been one that... I think that's probably the most asked for figure by fans of DC UC figures. Anyway, off that tangent, because we're on to DC collectibles here, the ones who actually delivered. Let's take a look at the accessories. Um, those being his guns. So he's holding them. And I will take them out. He's got two trigger fingers. They're bendy, so you can kind of curl them into a fist if you don't want him holding the guns. Um, 
they're just, you know, plastic, molded, kind of thin, painted silver, painted black on the handles. I don't know what kind of gun they are, I'm sorry, I'm not a gun person, I don't know anything about them. But they fit nicely in his hands, he's got two of them, better than not having accessories, and then he also has holsters for them on his thighs. They have these little straps and everything that don't actually snap, but, you know, whatever, I guess it's the thought that counts. And they fit nicely in there, very easily. See, now that I'm looking at it, the straps look kind of goofy, because they don't like to sit down. I feel like maybe, um, some hot water, uh, and then just holding them flat like this might help them to curve a little better against the actual, uh, against the holster, but that's no biggie. Now, those are his only real accessories. Now, additionally, he has 